Hey, what's going on, everyone? My name is Matt Jarbo. This is Three Buck Theater. And we know that Deadpool 2 is trying to reclaim some of the lost money that it didn't make when it came out earlier this year. Let's be fair. There's there's no other reason for the special Christmas edition PG-13 cut other than the fact that they're trying to double dip at the box office before the end of the year, as well as cut into uh, Aquaman's earnings. And, uh, and and let's be fair, it, it's actually probably going to hurt it. Aquaman has now, uh, it's been estimated to open a little bit lower than I anticipated, with I think around like 40 to $60 million on this opening weekend, which is unfortunate because the movie looks freaking amazing, and we've already seen Deadpool 2 and Mary Poppins. Man, I don't really care much about that, to be honest with you. But that being said, what the hell is going on with this PG-13 cut of Deadpool 2? Like, what what is happening with it? Uh, I mean, we know, at least this is my opinion, like I said, that they wanted to make a billion dollars if they would have released the movie. Uh, I think at, at February of this year, it would have it would have maybe gone on to make that kind of cash rather than being sandwiched between Avengers Infinity War and Solo, both of which took away from the profits Deadpool 2 could have possibly taken hold are taken home. But now we've learned through an interview uh, with Paul Wernick and Rhett Reese, basically what they're working on. And it's interesting. So it says here, speaking with slash film, uh, Reese and Wernick revealed new scenes were filmed specifically for the upcoming PG 13 movie two months ago, along with confirming Ryan Reynolds return for the new scenes saying here, we definitely shot new stuff. And recently too, after Deadpool two came out and we were all sitting around, we came to it less about the idea of let's make a PG 13 movie and more let's talk a bit more about Deadpool. And we were kicking around some ideas. And then I think it was Ryan who had the great framing device and we all got excited and went to the studio and they said, yeah, let's do it. Fire up the cameras. About two months ago, we were on sound stages shooting again. Ryan is in the full suit. The gang is back together. David Leitch and Ryan and us having a great time and laughing. It comes together so great. And we're super excited about it. Now, what does this mean? Well, they said, he said a lot there, right? Now, the framing device is kind of what I want to focus on here, because what exactly is the framing device? Now, we don't know for certain, so this is pure speculation, but we've seen the image of Fred Savage uh, recreating the scene, the opening scene from The Princess Bride and Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool telling him the story of Deadpool 2. Now, the opening of Deadpool 2 does have the narration of saying, like, this is a family movie. This is a story. And it could be him just sitting there with Fred Savage narrating what happened in between Deadpool 1 and Deadpool 2, narrating more things about him and Vanessa, narrating, 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 cracking jokes, cracking jokes, cracking jokes, cracking jokes. Because it says here that we were on a soundstage, meaning that everything that they shot, all the PG-13 content that they shot was on one soundstage. So this isn't going out and creating whole new sequences for the movie. This isn't going out and creating whole new uh, uh, bits and pieces of it. This is literally all, again, my opinion, is going to be all Fred Savage, all in the uh, uh, all in the room, all recreating uh, Princess Bride, and that's it. That's it. They sat out there. They shot all the stuff. Fox is like, you know what? Let's go for it. Let's do it. Let's it's because it's going to be super cheap. They've already got all the digital files from the release of Deadpool two. They can just intersplice in the new cut. Uh, send out the hard drives to theaters, and it's actually a relatively inexpensive re-edit and re-release. And the funny thing with that is, though, is it's going to be fascinating to see what happens next because uh, this could be a bit of a, of a bit of a door opener for other films, right? Just imagine for a second if, like, they were like, "Hey, let's release a PG-13 version uh, of Logan." Now, okay, here's the thing, and I I I, I want to circle back around uh, to my to my to my closing point, but first I want to talk about. Uh, I've mentioned this before. Why not release two cuts of films in theaters, right? Like you, you but, you know, have your PG-13 cut for the morning shows and the matinees, right? And then the evening shows that the prime set and your final set, those two movies would then be the R-rated cut because some theaters don't allow kids in after 6 p.m. Some theaters don't allow kids at all to come into there. And people like that. Parents are now going to these kind of luxury theaters as an escape. Young people are going there to have an experience and not go with the family of eight that sitting there all making noise. Thank you very much. Cars too. That's why I hate kids in theaters, man. Uh, but the point is essentially that's, that's what I, I think they should do. I think they should have the R rate, the PG 13 cut run that the first three shows of the day, the final two shows of the day. Look, these projectors can hold multiple movies 
on there. So it's not like they're, you know, it's not like they can't do it. And then just flip over to the next movie and play the R rated cut. There you go. Boom. And you might actually get double the revenue because people who go see the PG 13 at a cheaper rate, right? They go see the morning matinee shows might go, that was pretty good. I wonder what the R rated cut has to say. And then they want to go see it after that. Or if they go see the R rated cut and they're like, yeah, that's not so bad, but I, I want to take my kid to go see it. I'll go back and see an earlier cut. I'm telling you, that's going to be the unrated and rated cut. It's not that confusing and it would actually work really, really, really well. And it wouldn't change any of the paperwork for the theaters. It would just make the assistant managers who have to run the projectors pay a bit more attention, which given how many times a year we hear about, uh, you know, uh, 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 kids movies running an, an R rated flick. They don't pay enough attention as it is. <laughs> and even when I was a manager and, 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 and projectionist, I've made that mistake before. Whoops. Uh, but anyway, that's, that's my thoughts on, on that particular thing. But again, this, this, uh, this other, this, this PG 13 move, uh, is also to see how a PG 13 Deadpool two will do with the box office to basically prove itself to Disney. That's what it is. I mean, let's be fair. Let's be realistic. Everything else is speculatory. I think this is the real deal. This is the real deal because what they're going to do is they want this to be successful with Disney. If it's successful with Disney, then they make their money. Disney goes, Deadpool is a viable property. We can then integrate him into the larger MCU. PG-13 Deadpool works with audiences. They will accept it. They will take it. They enjoy it. We just have to change the jokes, but the, you know, we can make it work. And that's what it is. This is a tester. This is an audition to see if a PG-13 Deadpool can still gross a lot of money. I don't know if that's the case. I don't know if it actually can or not. And I'm still very curious to find out if it will. But anyway, those are just my thoughts on this one. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know down in the comments. If you made it this far, uh, type in uh, Fred Savage into the chat. So I know you guys made it. And uh, leave your thoughts. Am I on to something? Am I all over the place? Am I wrong? I want to hear your, your thoughts and opinions. So be sure to comment below. Uh, thumbs up the video. Please subscribe and check back often for more content from me. My name is, of course, Matt Jarbo. This has been Three Buck Theater. Have yourself a great day, guys, and peace out.